This is my brand new Husky 46 inch mobile workbench that I just got in from Home Depot. And today I'm going to show you how I assembled it. I ordered this Husky workbench from the Home Depot website and they delivered it on a pallet. Now I have another one of these and when they delivered it, I just rolled it up the driveway. It was already pre-assembled. But this one I'm going to have to put together and I got to figure out how I'm going to do this. So if you've received a Husky workbench like this on a pallet, maybe this video will help you too. I'll show you how I did this. Most of it I did by myself. I did have some help there at the end I'll show you. So the first thing I'm doing here is I'm just trying to get it out of the package or get most of the cardboard off. Uh, I just take these cardboard pieces and throw them off to the side for now. They'll probably get thrown away. There's also some styrofoam uh, packing material that needs to come out. The bottom of the cardboard on this box is stapled to the side piece. So you can usually go around with your foot and just kind of mash down to break those staples loose. Once you do that, it's pretty easy for two people to lift this cardboard off of the tool chest. One person could probably do this, especially if you broke all the staples on one edge of that cardboard. I'm going to lay this on the floor because I'm going to actually use this to protect the back of this workbench uh, while I'm putting the casters on. After you've removed all of the plastic, open the bottom right drawer and you're going to find a package that has all of the casters and the mounting hardware as well as the handle. It's probably a good idea to go through everything in this box just to make sure everything is included in your package. Nothing was missing from mine. They included everything perfectly. In addition to the mounting hardware, you'll also find a small Allen wrench. So you really don't need any tools to install this. You could just use what comes with the tool bench. You'll find a roll of this black nylon strap in the kit, but you can just toss that. That's for the store use if it's a display model. We don't need that. The instructions that come with the workbench are pretty clear, easy to understand, good pictures and everything is laid out. You could follow these directions. I'm just going to make a couple of modifications. I'm not going to flip it over on its top. I'm going to just lay it on its back to install the casters. The instructions recommend installing the handle first and then installing these two small hooks. Both of these install on the right side of the cabinet. I'm actually going to install the two hooks first I don't think it really matters whether you install those or the handle. And we're going to use four of the four millimeter screws that come in the kit. Now, when I say four millimeter, I mean you're going to use a four millimeter Allen wrench to install these. And one end of the wrench they provide is a four millimeter. Now, Husky has welded the nuts for all of these bolts to the inside of the cabinet. So it's very easy to install. You don't have to worry about holding a nut with one hand and trying to get the bolt lined up. They're already built into the cabinet. So it's very, very easy to install. And all of the hardware that they provide is very high quality. Now we're ready to install the handle and we're gonna use four more of those four millimeter screws and these go in the appropriate holes. Uh, just look at the instructions. It's pretty simple. You can't really screw this up. They'll only go in one way. So now it's time for me to install the casters onto the bottom of this cabinet. And my goal or my thinking is I'm going to slide this cabinet to the end of that pallet to the edge and let it flip over onto its back. And I'm going to use that cardboard to protect the painted back of the cabinet. Here I'm just using brute force to kind of slide this thing over to the edge of the pallet. And I want to get the cabinet hanging off of enough to where it starts to kind of tip on its own. Of course, the pallet wants to move too. You want to be very, very careful with your feet when you do this. You do not want that cabinet to come down on your feet because, like I said, it's very, very heavy. You could very easily break a bone in your foot. So uh, take a lot of caution as you're sliding this over like I'm doing. 
Now, if you watch this video to the very end, I'm going to tell you a very obvious tip that would have made this a lot easier and a lot safer. So make sure you watch the video till the very end. Once I got the cabinet to kind of tip over on its own, it was fairly easy to control the fall, you might say. I was just going to hold it and keep it from falling too fast. Here you want to watch your fingers. Don't have your fingers underneath the cabinet. I actually found it better to use the handle on the right hand side to let it lower down It give me something to hold on to. You can't really hold on to the front of the drawers because they're not that strong. Just be very, this is where you have to be careful with your foot because that cabinet might want to swing around and fall on your foot. Okay, now the cabinet is on its back and now I can install the casters. Here you can see the holes where we're going to mount the casters. Each caster has four mounting bolts. These are five millimeter bolts. They're a little bit larger and they take a five millimeter Allen wrench. And we're going to get the casters out and install those next. If you look at the instructions and even the picture on the box will show you which casters mount where. The fixed casters go on the left side of the cabinet and the swivel casters go on the side that has the handle. I'm going to mount the fixed casters first on the left side of the cabinet. This is what they look like. There is no swivel. First I'm going to get all the bolts started by hand and then it's time to tighten them. And they do, like I said, include this wrench in the kit. It's 4 millimeter on the long end and 5 millimeter on the short end. And it's a little more difficult to use this wrench than one that I happen to own. So I'm actually going to use my uh, 5 millimeter Allen wrench to tighten these because this one is just a little difficult to use. Now these Allen bolts are made of steel and you're actually screwing into a steel nut that's welded to the cabinet. So you can go crank down pretty hard on these. You want these tightened very firmly. After installing both of the fixed casters on the left side, it's now time to install the swivel casters on the right hand side. This is what they look like. Doesn't matter how you position the base as long as you line up those four holes that will swivel no matter what. So let's go ahead and install these next. So once I have all four casters installed, as you can see here, now I've got another quandary. How am I going to get this 200 pound cabinet back up onto those casters? There's no way I can deadlift that from the floor, not by myself. And the problem is there's really nothing to grab onto uh, from the top of the cabinet to give you any leverage to get underneath. And besides, at my age with my back, how am I going to get this cabinet back on? And once I do get it up on the casters, will it start to roll on me? So I'm going to go ahead and lock these casters. They have locks on them to keep them from rolling. So I'm going to go ahead and lock those down first and then figure out how I'm going to get this cabinet back upright. I literally spent the better part of 45 minutes walking around this cabinet trying to figure out how to lift it. You can't use the front of these drawers because they're not strong enough. They're just, they're just kind of flimsy. You wouldn't want to try to lift all that weight using that to pick up the cabinet by. And there's only a chrome handle on one side of the cabinet. Otherwise, uh, we could probably have lifted it using the chrome handle. And then it finally struck me. It's so obvious. One thing you can do is to reduce the weight of the cabinet. And the way I did that was by going ahead and unlocking the drawers and removing all but the bottom two drawers. That gives you a lighter cabinet plus this ledge right here that you can use to get a grip on the cabinet and lift it up. I left the bottom two drawers in because they're a little more difficult to remove and it really wasn't necessary. 
Now, with the help of my girlfriend, we can both grab the cabinet under that ledge under the top drawer and just simply tip it up on the casters. And now that tip I promised you at the end of the video, remove the drawers before you try to tip it over onto its back to install the casters. You'll reduce the weight of the cabinet, you'll have more leverage to tip it over onto its back, and you're going to probably need to remove those drawers to get it back upright anyway. So that's my tip. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button.